members of the big London yeah. uh, anti-Trump march stand up for racism, stated in a press release, and I quote them, the effects of the Trump presidency is set to be felt all over the world as racism, sexism, homophobia and bigotry are normalised with the voice of one of the most powerful mm. and visible figures in the world. Is that a sentiment that you think is justified? It is. I mean, I, I think the contrast is quite incredible. You've got to remember um, the, the whole campaign against Obama and whether he was born in America or not, the Burfa movement, which he was fundamentally involved in, uh, Mr. Donald Trump. Uh, uh, and yet we were told that we would see his tax returns and we haven't seen sight of it at all during the campaign, and it's quite clear we're not going to see the sight. It was sight. quite but ironic. Yeah. I, everybody remembers uh, Obama being asked for his birth certificate. Yeah, yeah. That he was yeah, a naturalised exactly. American citizen. And it, uh, but uh, Trump can't pro provide but, uh, his tax returns. I mean, yeah. you, you know, that, that, that's quite fundamental, and I also do think he's not... He's not going to be able to distinguish between his business interests and the interests of America. They're quite clearly two different things. And the way that he has set up his businesses to be controlled by, uh, by his family still uh, doesn't reassure a lot of people that he will be able to make that distinction between the two, his business interests and the, the interests of America. And I'm sure uh, this will cause him a lot more angst and problems than, than he, than, than he realises. And I won't be surprised if something does develop on that front, which will probably make Watergate look like a walk in the park. Well, what's this space in that respect? Now, a Stop the War press release uh, said, against the backdrop of spreading war and glowing, uh, growing global competition, uh, we face the prospect of the most reactionary president in US history. And Donald Trump's election should be alarming for all who are concerned with peace and justice. Mm. Why should should we why should we be more fearful of Trump's I suppose you could say isolationist policies than for example Hillary Clinton's neocon interventionist mm. policies uh, of a West uh, imposing regime change in mm. Libya or her advocation of an escalation of hostilities in Syria and or, or a more openly confrontational approach to Russia. What, yeah. what? No, you're right uh, because actually during the uh, election campaign in some ways there was the uh, litmus test was attitudes to Syria, and, and the attitude to Syria was uh, quite different. Uh, Hillary Clinton was talking about the no-fly zone, which would invariably have meant American Air Force planes uh, shooting down Russian and Syrian ones, uh, a clear escalation in other words, whilst uh, Mr Trump was talking about um, actually sitting down with the, the Russians to do some kind of deals uh, because he saw the enemy not so much uh, Assad, but the uh, Daesh and their activities. Um, so that actually, um, yes, it does present yourself uh, a, a, a hawk versus an isolationist. But th the reality is that was quite different. He, he was also committing himself to uh, greater expansion in military spending, um, both nuclear and civilian, and we are beginning to see that. Plus the realignment of some of the politics in the Middle East. I mean, I, quite frankly, I find it shocking that one of the first p people he picked up the phone with was General CC in Egypt and called him a, a, a dear friend, etc. Um, so things have actually not got any, uh, won't have got any better. Um, and whilst we may be gr grateful that we haven't got Hillary Clinton there, uh, I still think there's a, a role for us to emphasise that we need to stop uh, the, the wars that have been coming uh, from the States over these last few decades from even further back than Vietnam War and more recently Iraq and Libya. Now you were top billing at a meeting held this week in Belfast under Thank the uh, banner of a more dangerous world um, organised by Stop the War and the Peace uh, and Neutrality Alliance. Indeed. Um, I understand that concerns were raised about the UK's special relationship with the United States and also the fact that, and I quote, the most powerful person on the planet, Donald Trump, appears to be, it, said, it was said, full of contradictions, not too happy with economic or global agreements. There were concerns that Trump may feel threatened by the EU superstate and could form an alliance with Russia or that he may start war with China, may decide to move his resource wars to Africa. Do you think some, as some are saying, that it's an overreaction to empty rhetoric and that we should all calm down a bit and wait to see the real, more moderate Trump emerge? 
Well, people said that would emerge whilst he was president-elect, and we didn't see any signs of that, certainly on Twitter. Uh, so it, it is, we're, we're right to be very concerned. But firstly, the special relationship. Well, I, I, it's, it's actually a, a major figment of, I think, British politicians' imagination. Uh, I was reading something in the Evening Standard yesterday, uh, Anthony Hilton in the City Pages, which said it quite, quite well, that it's only us that think uh, that there is a special relationship, and no one, no one really in America does, and we're deluded if we think so. Uh, Theresa May is going, at the end of this week, to the States, and she thinks she's going to get a special trade deal out of an American president, uh, Donald Trump, who's advocating America first, uh, in trade and wants to make sure uh, that in trade uh, that uh, people buy and hire American. Well, good luck to her because, I, frankly, it, it, I don't it, see it evolving. But, but, but isn't it true that he's made it a public noise uh, of, of the fact that uh, he's in complete contrast to Obama who said you'll be in the back of the queue if you go for Brexit and he's saying that's a mistake, you'll be in the front of the queue? Well, we'll see... Whether we're in the queue or not, you're still going to be treated in a certain way. And I think the messages he has put out with America First and his complete and absolute focus on the impact on Americans will exclude the possibility of any favourable trade agreement. The reality is we're still, the, Britain is still trading four or five times more than it does with Europe than it is uh, with Britain. And I'm not sure the door's going to be opened up there. Um, what Stop the War is all saying uh, is essentially, do we really want this uh, special relationship? And I think actually, when, 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 if you're knocking on doors, uh, given who the American president is today, I'm not sure that's going to be received very well at all. Uh, and uh, whilst the political classes uh, may, may go along with this idea that there is a special relationship, uh, it doesn't stand up to scrutiny at all. And I think that will be more apparent as, we, as the Donald Trump where it goes. Are we overreacting or are we underreacting? Well, I, I, I would be on the cautious side. I'd rather overreact than underreact. And um, I think he's actually, he hasn't mellowed at, at all during the time he was just the uh, uh, president-elect. Uh, and he's kept up the pace since he's got into the White House for, uh, over the last few days. So I think we're right to be... Um, uh, on the cautious side, so overreacting makes a lot of sense, because otherwise he doesn't get the messages and people won't as well. Well, a week's a long time in politics. We'll see how things pan out over the next few days. Um, Murad Qureshi, uh, chair of the Stop the War Coalition in the UK, it's been a real pleasure. Thank you so much for joining me on Islam Channel. Thank you very much.